Hi there, everybody. Welcome. See if you just joining in now, so I'll just pause a moment. Bro, cool. thank you for coming. My name's Laura Hill, and I head up Cloud Essentials, the UK region. And this today is, is part of a, a regular series of webinars and events that we run around Microsoft Purview, which are these controls uh, that Microsoft are giving you around um, Microsoft Cloud to create those conditions for, for compliance and governance for all of that data um, that you're growing. So today we're, we're not pitching the solution to you, but rather helping you figure out um, how best to kind of unlock the potential in it. So our aim with these sessions and our eBooks and our blogs is to really just sort of impart our knowledge as a partner and share lessons learned. So if you've not subscribed already, um, please do so via the link to receive regular insights from us, from our, our technical and our compliance team around this and, and other kind of related topics. And um, you'll see our LinkedIn uh, information in the in the chat now so you can connect with us because you're going to hear from myself today and two colleagues um my uh, my colleague johan van schalkwerk is our microsoft 365 technical lead and he is going to bring today years of in-depth technical experience to talk through some some um, important capability in microsoft purview and my colleague nivasha sanalal who is our compliance and risk officer is coming from a, a financial background and is going to bring expertise in really just how to kind of engage the business, engage risk, engage uh, more compliant stakeholders in discussions around Microsoft Purview. So the format for the session today is um, Microsoft as we um, as we can present the content to you. We'd love to capture some input shortly via a QR code, so please have your phones ready. Um, and just type questions as we go in the chat and use that chat function. We'll, we'll definitely tackle them um, at the end and have a bit more of a, an informal session at the end, um, but we'll keep an eye on it and, and we'll answer them um, as we go through if the flow um, sort of works to do so. So we're speaking to you today from a, a place of being a long-standing Microsoft partner around the area of content management. So the experience that we're sort of going to share today is because at any given time, our team are running programs of work to help our clients, often in, in regulated industries, to reduce their risk profile of all that content in Microsoft 365 migrate content, manage high volumes of it um, that are growing in, in SharePoint Teams, OneDrive, email, and manage the life cycle very cost effectively, but also really ultimately open up the value in that content. So using things like AI so that all this accumulated data can be surfaced um, as knowledge and kind of used to a business advantage. And the professional services uh, practice that we've built around uh, Microsoft Cloud for Compliance is that of effectively being a, a specialist team that you can bring in um, in, a, in a very flexible sort of outsourced capacity. So almost using us as an extension of your compliance team and your IT team to really kind of join together and, and fill skill, time, capacity, resource gaps around purview adoption. So, um, you know, being available in a very flexible model um, where our team can support you at a leadership level, uh, you know, creating and driving that strategy for adoption and, and giving best practice sort of consulting and technical um, and, and, and risk uh, recommendations. Designing and deploying um, technical and non-technical streams of work. So, for example, preparing for and adopting DLP or, or building classification taxonomy or maybe deploying insider risk features. Um, and then also this kind of um, proactive management of purview adoption, you know, bringing reports to life um, and making sure that you're making progress in a in a meaningful way and, and responding and reacting um, to all the ongoing sort of administrative activities that go on in compliance center. So the upshot of our program is, uh, you know, very comprehensive adoption of purview and driving up that maturity level in a, in a quicker and, and a more cost effective way than perhaps trying to piece it all together in house. So just to take a bit of a step back for context of this conversation today, you know, securing 
your data and ensuring compliance with the data, it is a, a top concern for most senior leaders. And data breaches are happening all of the time from malicious attacks on the outside or inadvertent or malicious attacks from the inside. And the challenge of that and the challenge of compliance is really compounded by having data living in multiple locations, you know, being accessed from different locations and often quite a fragmented approach to um, sort of manage all of that data and, and having perhaps adopted different processes and different technologies at different times. And add to that the sort of compound effect of growth and change, you know, your data footprint doesn't stand still, it is expanding, it is moving all of the time. Uh, regulations don't stand still, the technologies that you're using certainly don't stand still, and your business doesn't stand still. So there's a lot of movement, a lot of change going on at any given time. And sensitive data very much sits at the heart of this conversation. A, a recent Microsoft survey found that 30% of decision makers around data management couldn't specify where or sort of categorically what their sensitive data is. And this is very much where Purview comes in and, and our team comes in around that to, to sort of help you answer those questions, really, to shine a light on the current state of play. You know, where is this data? What is it? How are you going to identify it? Who's got access to it? What user behaviors are going on around it? And ultimately, you know, what levers are you going to pull uh, and when are you going to pull them and how are you going to pull them in your Microsoft Compliance Center to, to get in control and just to incrementally um, make gains on, on your compliance maturity level. And the, the controls in Microsoft Compliance Center are alone and not a magic bullet. You know, it's, it's not going to be the only technology string to your bow. Um, but it's very unique actually to have a cloud platform that is the the home of a large amount and a growing amount of your unstructured data and that cloud platform and that cloud provider to be so um, natively sort of sophisticated in the compliance and the governance controls and capability that it gives you. So the question and, and a question to you to kind of invite um, some feedback to us and, and to, to your peers here really is, you know, against that backdrop um, and against uh, the context of where you're at with Microsoft Purview, you know, what is holding you back in advancing your position um, with with governance and with with compliance across your Microsoft ecosystem? Uh, we know that there are many organisations wanting to make strides with Purview, and perhaps you've already got the the licensing in place, but there are barriers in the way. Um, so, just want to invite some input from you. So, please, could you share? in a couple of words, um, what's holding you back in your journey of adoption with Purview. So hopefully on the slide, and I'm just a bit concerned as what happens with live events sometimes, that the QR code hasn't presented itself um, on the screen. So we should have a QR code via Slido here. If not, there's a link um, that we've just put in the chat. And if you go to that link and tap in the, the code, um, then you've got an opportunity there just to put in a few words, um, any thoughts that are coming to mind in terms of kind of barriers to, to where you're heading with Microsoft Purview. So I'm just going to pause and ask a colleague what people are seeing on the slide. We should. Jan, can you move on a slide and just see if um, it starts to populate? No, I don't think so. No. Mm. Uh, OK, this was a fail then. <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry. Uh, I'm not sure quite why. Um, but yeah, perhaps we'll send out a survey afterwards because we're really keen just to understand a little bit more. And um, I think things that that might resonate with you and and perhaps if you if you did have things to mind you could just pop them in the chat if you felt um comfortable to do so um 
I suppose things that we hear that that may be resonate with is perhaps a lack of awareness of um, exactly what you've got available available to you and sort of the art of the possible um, with all of that. Um, we certainly see different perspectives from different roles within organisations, maybe um, less technical roles, um, perhaps not being aware of the tool sets that are available to them. Um, Often issues maybe around just that clarity on policy and that kind of flow down of policy and decision making that needs to happen before um, implementing uh, controls within Microsoft purview. And also something that, you know, I know Navasha is going to, to talk to and that is sort of, you know, in-house teams having alignment around um, adoption and kind of giving um, giving it the the capacity it needs and the resource it needs um, to to actually get something sustainable going and get some momentum going um, with the deployment of of purview but um i'm gonna hand over to navasha and Johan now who are going to lead us in some thinking around sort of how to uh, come com common barriers that we see and some kind of practical pointers around the technology. Um, but I would love to get this survey going afterwards. You're not going to get away with not uh, not giving us feedback because it'd be, it'd be great to hear kind of the challenges that, um, that are going on within the audience today because we've got a real mix of different industries and, and different um, roles um, represented here today. So Navasha and Johan, do you want to take us through the, the next section? Yeah, maybe before Nivasha starts, maybe you can add your challenges in the chat and we can get around to do that at the end if there's enough time, like Chris has done. But yeah, over to you, Nivasha. Oh, thanks, Johan and Laura. So I'm on the Slido page and I see there's quite a few questions or quite a few responses on there. It could just be um, the tech trying to catch up with us, um, but if you <laughs> both have time, you can just go check it out. Some really good ones coming through, so thanks everyone for sending them through already. I love using the word technical because um, whenever I'm described, I'm, I'm probably the most non-technical person here um, from a purely technical, again, I'm going to use the term, uh, perspective, because I am a, a compliance specialist, as Laura has uh, has alluded to. And I've also recently been made aware by my lovely colleagues that not everyone is, is as enthusiastic about these uh, compliance and risk webinars. Uh, who knew? But uh, they're definitely worth joining, considering those numbers that Laura displayed around the cost of non-compliance being about three times the cost of compliance. And despite this, it's often difficult, and I've seen some of the responses come through as well, for organizations to become compliant and remain compliant or, res or um or obtain buy-in around compliance. Um, you think, again, looking at those numbers and looking at um, what's happening around us, um, it, that would be much easier. But often this is due to the sheer volume of regulatory changes, coupled with the ever-evolving technology and resources, uh, resource constraints, which often hinders an organization's ability to implement effective control that addresses growing risks. So today, Johan and I will be providing you with an overview of the Cloud Essentials Compliance Methodology, or also known as our formula for success. So before I introduce our formula, I'm going to tell you what our formula is based on. Um, so it focuses on best practices in the assurance field, as well as uh, coupling that with cutting edge Microsoft technology. So the first of which is to ensure that controls implemented address people, process, and technology. And the second is ensuring that within an entity that all controls implemented involves elements of a combined assurance model, which seeks to ensure that all stakeholders across assurance providers, um, their resources are optimized so that taken as a whole, uh, these enable an effective control environment. So as you know, or as you'll learn, uh, Microsoft Purview is a data protection, risk management, and unified compliance solution that you can use to stay on top of your compliance requirements and manage your data from a central point. So I'm going to take you through our five-step formula for achieving greater compliance maturity, which is based on the best practices I've outlined above, as well as the technology. So. If you look through um, step one, uh, step one seeks to assess and benchmark. Step two is prioritize and plan. 
Three is to assemble and engage. Four, deliver and drive. Five, monitor and report. And again, I get lots of jokes around the five step processes, but bear with me. We are going to take you through each step and I will contextualize as we go along. So let's move to step one. So step one, which is aptly named assess and benchmark, seeks to gauge the current compliance and technology position of an entity. And this is done by taking into consideration your regulatory requirements, your stakeholder skill sets, as well as doing a technology validation. The purpose of this step is to ensure that your organization gains an accurate view of the current landscape to create a basis for the way forward which gives your organization an indication of what needs to be done and when. A quick way of doing this using Microsoft Purview would be the compliance score. So some of the ways Microsoft Purview helps us with assessing and benchmarking is by providing an initial score based on the M365 data protection baseline. This baseline is a set of controls that includes key regulations and standards for data protection and general data governance. But as I said, I'm not the technical one on this call, so I'm going to hand over to Johan. We'll take you through some of the capabilities of Purview that can assist you to bring step one to life. Thanks, Nivasha. Um, like Nivasha mentioned, Microsoft Purview is a unified information protection, data governance, and risk management compliance solution that allows customers to manage their data across uh, different environments from a single platform, and that includes on-premise, cloud, and um, and also supported source locations. But for the first step, assess and benchmark, Microsoft Purview really assists organizations to understand and govern their data by adding visibility that's built into Microsoft Purview. It starts off with usable information and useful information that Microsoft Purview out of the gate provides to any customers, whether they've been on Microsoft 365 for a few years or they are it's a brand new tenant. You can utilize the data classification overview page to gain insights of sensitive information types that's natively included by Microsoft, but also AI-driven, trainable, classified, sensitive information types that utilizes machine learning to classify risky information into broader categories. But I'll jump into more detail of sensitive information types and how it can be customized to suit your organization's needs later in today's session. As I mentioned, Microsoft Purview also has got the ability to extend this visibility and control and um, data management outside of your Microsoft 365 environment. Through Microsoft Purview, or as it was known before, Azure Purview, you can bring in data from other cloud platforms and on-prem locations, supported SaaS applications, and even locations where structured data is stored all into your Microsoft Purview environment, we can benefit from all of the features, including the ability to have a unified view of your organization's data assets, regardless of where they are stored. And then lastly, like Navasha mentioned, is the compliance score. It's a great benchmark and assessment tool that Microsoft offers out of the gate for all their enterprise clients. Um, the baseline score it is a measurement of the Microsoft Data Protection Baseline that's built on the National Institute of Standards and Technology Framework, or NIST, but also ISO, um, FedRAMP, and GDPR is all built into the default Data Protection Baseline assessment. But what's really beneficial is because every organization has got their own specific needs, compliance manager, relies on you to manage and add additional assessments that will improve um, and the ability for you to mitigate your risks and be um, address them as compre comprehensively as possible, but more on compliance score and compliance manager later in today's session. If I should you want to speak to an example of a real life case that we've seen the use of our first step in our process. Sure, Johan. I think this example is really going to frame the assessment phases and the importance of it. So 
the example of, um, I'm about to provide is about um, an entity that is a global pharmaceutical giant. They have multiple business units and are across multiple geographies, and they have about 6,000 users. And why we'd like to discuss this is because in this instance, the assessment had a very highly commercially or compelling commercial reason for it. And this client in particular was in a race for a contractual partnership to develop and distribute COVID-19 vaccinations. And they had to demonstrate very rapidly their compliance with privacy regulations like the GDPR and ISO 27001. And this was in order to collaborate with other developers of the vaccine. and. To do this, they needed to understand where they stood with regard to these controls and how they met these laws and standards. Office 365 was used to be for the sensitive information and as the collaboration platform to facilitate communications between these organizations. This required an assessment of their current position and to know precisely where, what the outcomes of the assessment meant in terms of the remediation and implementation of Microsoft 365 controls in order to demonstrate compliance and it, within a strong control environment. So the process was primarily driven by a technical team. So their approach to assess assessing and benchmark placed a lot of emphasis on understanding what the law and the standards required in order to inform the flow down into technology that followed very quickly. What we learned as Cloud Essentials working with this organization around this benchmark and assess phase was that benchmarking or a gap analysis is really effective as a catalyst for finding exactly what needs to be taken, what action needs to be taken, and getting the cold hard facts to establish a starting point. Things happen and things happen a lot quicker if you have a compelling commercial reason in order to demonstrate compliance or where there's a stake and the requirement comes down, um, comes top down uh, with immediate buy-in from senior execs. So now that we've um, showed how perfect can be used to assess benchmark and gain more, visi more visibility on your data, state and under certain um, situations address risk and exposure, what's next in our program and process for compliance maturity? So our step two focuses on prioritizing and planning. And this means determining what needs to be done in the short, medium, and long term by an organization. And best practice would be to adopt a risk-based approach. So this term risk-based approach is used widely by regulators, industry bodies, such as the Financial Action Task Force, and even Microsoft itself. And a risk-based approach caters for both compliance-driven and risk-based categorization um, to manage priorities. So the use of resources is also focused on those risks that could lead to catastrophic consequences for organizations. Some of the ways uh, Microsoft Purview helps us with prioritize and plan is by using capabilities such as the, as the compliance score that we discussed earlier. Johan, will you take us through a demonstration of the compliance managed to bring this to life? Yeah, sure. As I mentioned before, out of the start, you see your compliance score that's based on um, the baseline assessment. It's also broken down into different score areas um, of capabilities within Microsoft Purview Security and Compliance. If you look at the improvement actions, you get a list of not only compliance, but also security actions that you can use to prioritize and plan improvement actions that will close certain risks that you've identified in your organizations. And here it's critical you know, where you can see it aligns with industry standards and regulations and frameworks. Um, the next step is assemble and engage. And I think here is where the rubber hits the road. Um, so over to Nivasha, can you um, give us an intro into that before we dump back into technology and how perfect can be used? Thanks, Johan. 
So step three focuses on assembling and engaging. And in large organizations, as we all know, it's very easy for things to happen in silos. So when developing a project, a project team or a work stream, it's very important that outcomes um, that the outcome of this leads to the adoption of controls that incorporate people, process, and technology. And I'm sure many of you in attendance today have been in meetings and questioned why you're there or why isn't a particular business function there. And the flip side would be having robust discussions and coming up with great solutions, but not having the right people to implement those solutions in those discussions. So. It's also important to know that cyber criminals are getting smarter and more innovative by the second. The World Economic Forum has named cybercrime and cyber insecurity in their top 10 risks for the next two years and the next 10 years. And as regulation develops, it's imperative that the technology and assurance teams within organizations work together to continually enhance data privacy and cybersecurity solutions. It's critical that departments collaborate on their compliance solution. And one of the key drivers behind effective collaboration between IT and assurance functions is the creation and fostering of a compliance culture, which ensures that an organization and all of its staff understand the need and the value in compliance and see it as more than just a legal obligation. Yeah, I want to echo what you mentioned, Nivasha. Um, it's very important for security and technology teams to be very much part of the risk and compliance process. While technology is the last piece of the puzzle, it's also now one of the most effective ways of deploying and managing not only technology controls, but also people and process controls. Think of learning and training management platforms that rely more and more on the underlying technology to deliver and monitor and perfect compliance manager that you can help constantly monitor and measure centralized compliance documentation and collaborate on tasks across functional areas within your organizations and business. A typical example of this um, is the marking of consent rules contained in the Data Retention Act. Um, do you want to add, elaborate more on that example, Nivasha? Sure. So. As we've got people across territories here, your data protection legislation will differ. But I think what's a common theme within data protection legislation is the ensuring of honoring things like unsubscribes or opt outs, depending on the wording within your legislation. And when faced with a requirement like this, um, it's there's obviously a touch point on the marketing team to create uh, documentation, the compliance team to ensure that the wording is in accordance with your regulation and the technology team to ultimately execute. It's not as simple as adding an opt out response um, on an email. So the value that lies in correctly executing such processes would include being able to remove customers who do not consent for future uh, communications, tailoring marketing, campaign um, to customers going forward, as well as helping to identify for the organization and creating valuable customer trends. Um, and lastly, ensuring the organization steers clear of customer complaints or undue regulator scrutiny. So Johan, what other tools are there within Purview that can assist organizations to assemble and engage effectively? Yeah, I think we're back to compliance manager, but specifically some of the assessments. And as you can see, as I mentioned, there are built in assessments that's included within the Microsoft Purview license, but also premium templates that you can buy um, to add to include the way they align with your requirements. A useful feature is the recommended um, assessment templates where you can select your industry vertical or industry type and your location where your business operates in and Microsoft Purview Compliance Manager will recommend your the assessments that you can utilize to then manage and track your compliance um, implementation using the Compliance Manager and Purview. So as you can see, there's a list of recommended type templates placed on the choice, the decision or the choices, the choice that I made. When it comes to assemble and engage, the improvement actions, like I mentioned before, includes technology, but also non-technical um, document and policy 
um, criteria that you can utilize across different organizations and functions with the organizations. Um, you can assign tasks to individuals, either a technical resource or a different resource in your organization to complete. And then they can capture the implementation details of what was completed within the central management platform. They can also utilize Microsoft Compliance Manager to test and provide feedback of the testing results they did to complete the action. And also add ev evidence um, within the, uh, the improvement action. So you can utilize Microsoft Purview Compliance Manager to, as a central place to store all your improvement actions from policy documentations through to testing to ensure you successfully implement your compliance and govern, uh, governance actions and improvements. Step four, uh, sorry, before we get to step four, um, an example of a simple and engaged action, Nivasha. Sure. So to bring this step to life, I'll be discussing an example of a small but fairly complex organization that truly believed in the power of collaboration. They operate in 200 countries, so they are globally diverse, and that in turn increases their compliance complexity. As a commercial messaging part of service, they needed to demonstrate their um, data privacy compliance. Um, that would be to both uh, South African data privacy legislation as well as the GDPR. And even though they weren't a huge team, um, what they did well was to create a steering committee dedicated to getting data privacy initiatives off the ground and all the way through to deployment. They engaged key stakeholders from many different functions and did so with a lot of drive and enthusiasm. And one stakeholder championed the program and ensured that colleagues pitched up and did their bit. It meant that the outcomes of the assessment work didn't fall on deaf ears. Rather, there was a working group ready to make decisions and collaborate on the next steps. What we learned from this client around the assemble and engage phase is that having an enthusiastic internal champion makes a huge difference to bringing people together to engage on the compliance journey of an organization. And if you're lucky enough to have someone like this in your organization, don't let them go. But if not, um, Cloud Essentials is always around. And as you can tell, we're very passionate about um, ensuring collaboration and we're here to help you if needed. Thank you, Devasha. Step four focuses on the driving of the actual doing the work which is in this context would mean implementation of the correct systems and controls, specifically Microsoft Purview. And with the Microsoft Purview, this is where you utilize the unified information protection solutions that's built into Microsoft Purview to ensure that you address these risks from a technology perspective. And it starts off with Microsoft Purview Information Protection. It's a built-in modern data loss prevention solution that ensures the correct marking, protection, and permissions and access control lives with the data regardless of where it is stored. Um, it supersedes native data loss prevention solutions where the encryption and the protection actually lives with the document whether it's shared externally, externally if that is allowed, or whether it's stored on third-party cloud platforms. It's built on top, as I mentioned before, sensitive information types. And here you've got the ability to utilize the 400 plus native Microsoft sensitive information types, but very importantly, and probably critically to the success of the adoption of Microsoft information protection is, defining a clear taxonomy, ensuring your sensitive labels aligned with your data protection and tax taxonomy um, policies so that users know how documents with risky content must be classified, but all, also as you mature into automated classification and labeling, it aligns with regulatory specific, uh, and framework specifications that's built into your taxonomy and data protection policies. 
you have the ability to also utilize custom sensitive information types from your HR database, for example, um, or a client database where you can create exact data match based sensitive information types that will look for um, custom sensitive information types within your data estate and ensure the right controls and permissions applies to those um, business specific sensitive information types. Another critical feature from Microsoft Purview is information governance. And what this allows you and your organizations to do is to automatically maintain and retain your content from creation to deletion or through a automated or manual disposition process. This ensures you manage the risks um, of ensuring data is retained for the minimum duration that's required, but also when it comes to disposition of data, it is followed in a approved process so that you don't have the risk of um, losing data um, in your regulated, regulatory framework and requirements. What is useful is the, uh, the a new feature that Microsoft has built in is where third party record management systems can plug into the native preview information government features to the graph API to trigger when um, certain retention policies or labels um, must be applied. So for example, if a, 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 a project has closed, you can trigger an event to set off a disposition process within your Office 365 environment to ensure any records or documents for that project is retained for the required amount of years and then automatically deleted um, at the lapse of that period. Um, Microsoft PV Data Loss Prevention is another tool set that can be used to ensure that data is not maliciously or accidentally um, shared or exfiltrated from your organization. And as you can see on screen, it spans outside of the native Microsoft 365 environment. You can also configure data loss prevention policies on endpoints um, across all the supported operating systems, but also um, in um, non-Microsoft Cloud SaaS applications through the Graph API that I mentioned before, and critically also on-premise locations such as file servers and SharePoint sites can also be included in the data loss prevention um, policies and scope. Um, after the three basic core Microsoft Purview compliance um, solutions, one of the newer advanced compliance and purview features that's available to your organization is insider risk management. Um, it is it utilizes templates for identifying risky user behavior, such as um, um, exfiltration of data after a user has resigned, but also um, corporate sabotage, conflicts of interest, and even fraud or insider trading. It utilizes machine learning um, in the back end and templates built into the solution that you can customize and trigger workflows to investigate and address these risks um, to close those investigations from a compliance and risk perspective. What's currently in preview is um, automated um, compliance risks where the data loss prevention and insider risk management is bolted together so that data loss prevention and insider risk is flexed, um, is, is more flexible and the level of data loss prevention policies is customized and adjusted according to the level of user risk that's identified within the insider risk management. But that's currently in public preview um, and not yet fully um, released by Microsoft. Communication compliance is another advanced feature within Microsoft Purview, where it utilizes intelligent and customizable playbooks to again look for um, 
uh, um, risky user behavior within the, the communication technologies on top of Microsoft 365. So for example, the use of offensive language, intimidation, um, or even um, messages that's being sent outside of company policy, all these trigger points can be built into playbooks. And again, you can utilize customized remediation workflows to send alerts, um, train the users, and even escalate uh, the investigation further to ensure these risky communication behaviors are addressed within the organizations. The last step is monitoring and reporting. So Nivasha, do you want to give us an intro into that? Sure, thanks Johan. There's so many of those technologies that you just explained that stand out um, to me. And even though we've been working on the system for so long, um, it's just it, it, it's really imperative for organizations to realize how those technology and the technology solutions you've just outlined pair together with the people and processes that are needed in order to form an holistic control. And from that, I'll move on to our step five, monitoring and reporting, which then focuses on the monitoring of those key controls. And the reason we need to monitor these controls is to ensure that we can determine the adequacy and effectiveness of the controls. So we're checking the adequacy and effectiveness of the technology, as well as the people and processes involved um, within those controls in order to mitigate compliance risks, as well as to ensure reporting, um, adequate reporting is done. So Johan, will you discuss with us the monitoring and alert features that are built into Purview? Sure. Um, Microsoft Purview allows you to use the built-in reporting and dashboards and alerting feature to improve your compliance and risk posture on an ongoing basis. And it starts off again with all the built-in dashboards that you have got available within Microsoft Purview. As I mentioned, out of the box, you get the information of the sensitive information types that's currently within your organization, as you can see on screen. But as you start deploying technologies, you'll get a interactive report of how these technologies, for example, labels you can see on screen or data loss prevention policies are actually being consumed in your organization. And because Microsoft Purview Solutions is not a implement and forget, these reports and dashboards can then be used to continuously monitor, improve, and implement ongoing improvement actions to ensure the accuracy and results of these um, compliance and preventative measures. Each of the solutions, as you can see on screen, example is the information protection overview. You get more detail and a lot of useful detail of the actual adoption of, for this example, sensitive information labels that's utilized in your organization. And again, these dashboards and reports provides very useful insights of the adoption and where you need to drive better use of the technology within your organizations through um, knowledge improvements or, or policy controls within your organization. It also includes Microsoft Purview Audit. Um, there's two versions of it. It's the, um, the free version or standard version and then Audit Premium. Um, a useful feature and why we felt, we felt it's important to dial out in today's session within Microsoft Audit Premium is the ability to ensure that audit logs are retained for up to 10 years um, based on your current license and consumption from Microsoft 365 but then you'll ensure even your audit logs are retained the same as your data is retained within your Office 365 environment. So you've got clear insight and can use these audit logs with forensic inv investigations and um, incidents so that you have a clear track record of changes and other activities that occurred on your Microsoft 365 environment. Another feature that can be used within the ongoing monitoring and reporting is the ability um, from Microsoft Purview known as eDiscovery. 
And e discovery is important um, as it and it's been used by existing clients to actually reduce the cost of the litigation and investigation process by utilizing purview e discovery as an early case assessment utility and reducing the numbers or the volume of data and content that their internal and external litigation teams have to re review as part of each um, of these cases. It's also very important um, as the use of cloud attachments um, increases, um, only e-discovery can control and track the correct versions when document is shared as a cloud attachment. Third party systems currently doesn't have the ability to track which version of a document has been shared um, as a cloud attachment. So that is a, a feature that e-discovery is quite useful. Um, in that perspective. Nivasha, over to you for any commentary on this monitoring and um, uh, monitoring and alerting platforms from a compliance perspective. Thanks. Thanks, Johan. So as you know, monitoring and as you've highlighted, um, the technology that you've just taken us through in ensures that organizations can perform monitoring activities that provide or or that truly indicate um, that their controls implemented are successfully meeting their compliance obligations, as well as highlight any weaknesses across their people process and technology controls. And reporting provides organizations with a basis for implementing corrective actions, provides evidence of the success of your compliance program or your technology and its systems, as well as highlighting any weaknesses. It also assists with planning and reshaping future compliance obligations and technological solutions. So I think if you take one thing um, from the, our, our step five, it should be the importance of a symbiotic relationship between the assurance and technology teams in order to create effective controls that center on both or on people, processes, and technology in order to improve your compliance posture. Thank you. Um, I think back to you, Laura. Thank you both. Yeah, so just to kind of, I suppose, bring this session to to land and give some points to take away, but I also want to weave in at this point um, just some of the words that did surface from the poll that we did earlier, um, which I've now got a quick grab of. So there was comments there around overcomplicated licensing, um, which we hear a lot and we know. Um, and there's there's comments there around change, kind of a theme of change management, change adoption, um, buy-in has come up, uh, a lack of understanding, a lack of interest from the business has come up. Um, so yeah, I think therefore, you know, some of these kind of um, comments that I'm going to make now as, as we um, draw the session to a close, hopefully resonate with, with the, some of those. And the first is that of yeah, can't emphasize enough this this kind of benchmarking activity, you know, be brave and conduct some kind of audit of where you're at with the adoption of controls um, around your Microsoft ecosystem and and be even braver and seek out your sensitive data um, and uh, risky user behavior. You know, the technology is there for you to do so. And we often hear that challenge of, you know, we don't know what we don't know, but our advice is start knowing <laughs> you know you the tools are there um to surface these things and yes once you surface that vulnerability you know you can't ignore it um you will be looking to then take action on it but the longer you sort of wait to start exploring and enforcing these controls the more challenging it becomes because you certainly can't switch on all of this stuff that your hands talked just through all at once and it takes a lot of time to mobilize people and mobilize a kind of program around it so as um, Johan and Navash have said, ready and waiting for you in Compliance Centre is this compliance score. So um, there is a, a great indicator of a level of maturity um, and if anything, a great conversation starter for this kind of how should we mobilise, how should we assemble, how should we engage and, and what should we prioritise to go forward with. We're doing a session next month. Um, another webinar similar to this purely on that on your score and on some of the capabilities in compliance manager for that um, so please join us for that second piece of um, advice I suppose um, to leave you with is 
check out what you're already paying for. Um, you know, often it's more a case of mobilizing around the technology that you've already got rather than necessarily an investment in more licenses. You know, sweat what you've already got in Microsoft and any kind of third party tool sets that you've got. Um, I know the Point tool set were, were mentioned in the, the chat as well. Um, you know, learn about them as a team. Of, of technical and non-technical colleagues, um, which kind of leads into our, our final comment here with, which is this is definitely not just an IT gig. Um, you know, compliance and governance tools like Purview are designed to empower risk and compliance roles primarily to enforce the policies and, and, and the sort of areas of risk that they preside over. So the adoption plan for Purview, you know, should be created in collaboration and ultimately with, with that aim in mind to really get the most potential from the technology. So I hope you've learned something and we've helped you in some way in kind of progressing your, your thinking around Microsoft Purview. Some practical places um, to go from here might be to run an assessment. There's sometimes we can actually secure this um, for our clients to be uh, financially subsidized by Microsoft. So um, our assessments are a kind of four to six week piece of work to give you visibility on your level of maturity within Purview and your controls and kind of surface some areas of vulnerability and give you a bit of an action plan. So that can be a really useful place to start. Nivasha would like to extend a, an invitation to um, non-technical compliance orientated um, audience today to one-on-one -on -one, um, informal call um, if you think that would be helpful and we can kind of if we can, we'll send you coffee, um, but an online conversation just to mull over um, from a non-technical perspective, you know, where does Purview fit in? Um, and also just to flag that if you're a senior IT or risk um, professional and in London, um, we're hosting a roundtable event in June at Microsoft HQ, uh, their Paddington office. Um, so you can find out more and apply for a place to, to join us there in the link in the chat um, if you think that would be beneficial as well. So just to leave off, um, there's some pointers here and, and links throughout the chat. So we're going to kind of end the presentation mode here and stop the recording um, and tackle maybe in a bit more of an informal way. If you wanted to put any questions um, in the chat, then please do so now. So we'll kind of formally wrap up um, and, and switch off the recording just because I know sometimes people want to pop in a question um, but don't want to do so and have that captured. So if we can stop the recording.